just curious. But if you have a smartphone, this will work. So you basically download the Park Mobile app. It's very simple to use. And so it's going to pull up the screen. Now, one thing we're going to do for Medford, instead of it saying Park Mobile, it's going to say Park Medford. It's going to be customized for your city. That's going to be the messaging for it. And at the top, you'll see parking zone number. Every uh, street will have a zone number. And you'll simply enter that number into that top area there, right up here. Okay. I did one transaction in Chattanooga, that's where our home office is, and that's where we use Park Mobile as well. And so I can enter in <clears throat> that zone. So then theoretically, if you go to downtown Boston and pay for me or Metro. Uh, theoretically, yes. So you would pay the city of Medford money and, and they would be happy with that. This is I can go downtown and park here for We're going to have break. all questions at the end, okay? Yep. So now you got the zone in there and it shows the license plate of your vehicle. You can have multiple vehicles fed into the system. So if you own three or four cars or your company that has ten service vehicles, whatever it is, those could all be entered into the system. Okay. And then you're going to pay for how much time you want. Okay. I'm going to pay for one hour. Okay. Oh. Well, and it's telling me it's zero because it's after the parking is free right now in that zone, so it won't charge it for that. But so basically it's as simple as that. And the other great feature about this service is that as soon as you pay for parking, you're going to get an email or a text, however you choose to receive it, that tells you your, your parking account is now paying for parking. And it'll tell you where it is, the time, date, uh, your license plate number, how much you were charged, and such. Okay. And then it's also going to do some neat things for you. My email? It's going to give you a reminder when your time's about to expire. Wow. So that way, if you're sitting and your meetings run longer than you thought, you can literally by your phone add additional time onto the meter. And that way you're going to avoid that parking ticket. So we're trying to make it as convenient as possible uh, to park downtown. Now the time limits that are in place will remain. So if it's a two hour parking zone or one hour or 15 minute parking zone, that's still going to be enforced. But this system allows you to pay for only what you need. And it, like I said, I'll send you a reminder. It's also going to send you another email when your time actually expires. So that way if you didn't uh, renew your time or up your time, you have time, you know you need better to get back to the meter before a parking citation is issued. So one of the goals of the city was to make it as convenient as possible to pay. And so with credit card and coin and also the ability to pay by, uh, pay by phone, I think that accomplishes, uh, accomplishes that goal. Take paper money? Why not? What if you don't have any coins on you? Are you guys done with your presentation at this point to turn it over for the contract? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ty? City Solicitor of Rumbley, where are you? Hiding behind the machine? There you are. <laughs> I passed out uh, uh, copies of the contract that we negotiated with the public. Excuse me. member of the council. Excuse me. Uh, I do have a handful of other, of other copies, but I don't have enough for everybody here. But I'd be happy to split them with you each side. Three for that side. And so I was only going to get four. But I didn't anticipate this many people. Oh, the newspaper fellow wants one. So I don't know how you want to proceed through this. I can proceed through this contract a brick at a time, which will take a little bit of time to do. Or I can go quickly through and to highlight the different sections. It's approximately it's approximately 18 pages. Quickly and highlight. What would the council members like to do? Well, what do we do? Are we voting tonight? Or yes. No vote to be taken. Yes. Go through okay. it. So, uh, brief synopsis with all important points of the contract. All right. I'm going to present. Is everyone brief. on the council okay with that? Yes. Brief, brief synopsis. synopsis. Okay. okay. Then we're going to run through this really quickly. Uh, page one. You can just turn to page two because page one has all. Uh, so that would call to be uh, standing. It talks about the parties. It talks about the fact that this is a parking contract and it has pretty uh, cursory language. So you can go right to page two. Page two, it says in section two that the term of this contract is for seven years with the ability to extend it for another three years if the city 
uh, notifies the public of that within four months of the termination of the contract. Section 3 uh, talks about the fact that they're going to take over our parking program, both for all of the on-street parking, off-street parking, permit parking, essentially all of the parking functions uh, that are uh, pertinent to our city's uh, on-street, off-street, or um, parking lots. And in addition, any permits that uh, pertain to that. And that's, the, that's a synopsis of page two. You know, questions, I'll go to three. Questions will be asked. Okay. On page three, at the top of the page, uh, uh, Republic acknowledges that not all, not all streets in the city of Medford are under the jurisdiction of the municipality. There are certain streets that are under the jurisdiction of the DCR or the state, uh, like the Fellsway, etc. And those are not part of this uh, parking contract, or they are, they are also not part of what um, we could enforce anyway. As a matter of fact, right now that's done by the DCR. That'll still be done that way. Uh, section 4, which is on page 3, says that we have parking spaces, uh, that they're in uh, uh, good shape for a parking program, uh, that the uh, city has the exclusive ability to set the amount of fines, fees, and charges, and also the city has the exclusive discretion to amend, alter, or change the location of parking meters that pertain to <coughs> different parking spaces. So the governmental functions that the city would uh, exercise normally, we will still exercise in regard to this contract. All right. uh, to, to the bottom of page three, it talks about operating expenses. And uh, so this is where we begin the money, but I'm going to keep on this myself. I'm going to later defer it to Stephanie Burke about money. But the operating expenses, uh, we are responsible, of course, for the maintenance of the parking spaces that are covered by this along with uh, any of the normal upkeep and repair, including uh, filling holes or maintenance by way of uh, uh, resurfacing, all the normal things that we would do, any of the costs which are associated with a parking space. And I don't think that requires any great uh, um, further explanation. And of course, we're responsible for our own uh, police force and all the rest, as we normally are. Now, the capital expenses of Republic the capital expenses of Republic are, and I'll be specific on this, the parking meters, parking signs, enforcement software and hardware, vehicles, office equipment and furnishings, because as you'll learn later on, they're going to have to rent a uh, piece of property in the city of Medford to conduct their business within the municipality. So they're responsible for all that. And to do everything which is set forth in the uh, RFP, which is our uh, request for proposals and their response to that along with this uh, particular contract. In addition, for all of the capital expenditures that they uh, expend, they're going to amortize that on a schedule, which becomes pertinent later on in the contract. Now, uh, if the city terminates this contract, this is uh, section B I on page four, if the city exercises uh, a, a termination of this contract before the beginning of the initial term, then the city would be responsible to pay Republic for the unamortized capital expense of what they put up to buy all of the items that I've just described. And that would be set forth in the schedule. The uh, Republic is also responsible to provide a performance bond to the amount of $500,000. And the last section on page four, if the operator terminates this agreement before the end of the initial term, which, as I said before, is seven years, then the operator, which is Republic, will have to transfer it to the city, free of any liens or encumbrances. All of the items that they have, the meters, the vehicles, the enforcement system, hardware, software, etc., free from all liens to the city of Medford within 60 days at no cost, if they terminate. Page five, gross revenue. Um, I think I can explain the gross revenue part, but I'm definitely going to go to Stephanie on section seven. Gross revenue is defined under section six, which you'll find on page five. That the, uh, the definition is all revenue or gross receipts generated from the parking program, including revenues from citations, which are tickets, 
meters, permits, parking fees, advertising, short-term or long-term leases, and or pursuant to the utilization of any application of a wireless program or use of the internet as is presently available or as which may be developed in the future. That last section went in there. If you read about Boston recently, they have this application which uh, a, young, a young man developed. It's called Haystacking, where he puts this app on his phone and somebody else comes into the spot. Well, if Republic's going to make any dollars on any type of application like that, that's gross revenue and we're going to want to share in that. And it's also for any other clever thing that might come up in the future, because you don't know what's going to happen from a technological point of view as we go forward. So that's gross revenue. Uh, then, later on, Stephanie will talk to you just in a second. She'll talk to you about uh, different rent. Well, percentage rent and gross revenue is defined as all revenue collected from the program, regardless of who collects the revenue, less any particular ap applicable taxes, which uh, I don't think the state has any uh, tax on that. And we're not talking about income tax to Republic. We're talking about other taxes. Uh, or any credit card transaction fees. People use their credit cards. There's always a fee somewhere involved. That would be an expense which would go against gross revenue. Now, we get to accountability issues. Anytime you're dealing with money, if you're going to be responsible, whether it's in private business or if you're a governmental official or if you're even running your own home, the idea is accountability. So we try to build in some accountability here in a uh, substantive way which works. And so within 20 days of the end of each month, the operator, that's Republic, has to give the city a statement showing all of their revenue, including a detail of all citation revenue, meter revenue, permit revenue, or any other revenue. And this statement must, must include a copy of the monthly statement of a separate bank account maintained by Republic utilized by them for payments receives and transactions under this agreement. So we're not going to go ferreting through two, three, or four different uh, financial accounts or any other type of, uh, re uh, of trying to uh, repaste together what occurred during the course of a month from different accounts. Their accounts have to be one. They have to be uh, 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 fully disclosing the source of all revenues and the deposits within 20 days of, by the end of a, a particular month. Next, uh, they shall keep, uh, this is uh, double I on page five. Uh, they have to keep uh, records which they will make available to us at our wish. That, of course, is, uh, is standard stuff. And also, Republic agrees to submit to an annual audit of the gross revenue and operating expenses related to the parking management program. And in addition, uh, Republic agrees that it will provide to the city a copy of its annual corporate report. That seems redundant, but they're two different things. One is, an one is an audit of the revenue that comes to the city of Medford. The second is an audit of the uh, corporation. And so they'll provide that. And so happily, I'm at section seven. I'll rejoin you in a second. We're now going to talk about the amount of money which will be coming to the city. And for that, I defer to my colleague, Stephanie Burke. Stephanie Burke, for those of you that don't know, is our budget director and personnel director of the city of Medford. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, basically, once everyone gets a chance to digest this contract, there's two components to the rent that is paid to the city. There's a guaranteed element, and then there's a percentage rent element, which anyone familiar with shopping plazas and things of that nature, that's how they structure their um, rent payments, percentage rent. So we have two components, and the first year is different than the remaining years, because the first year, there's some uncertainty on to when it'll kick in, how much um, occupancy we're going to see. So the first year is going to structure a little bit different than the remaining years. But the guaranteed rent in year one is 300000 So if we collected zero pennies in year one, Republic still will pay the city of Medford 300000 for the 12-month period. Uh, that, that guaranteed rent goes up in year two, up to 700000 based upon the prior year's actual numbers. So you basically look at the income from year one, times are up to a 35% factor, and whatever that number is, up to 700,000. That's years two through 10. So that's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, the other piece is the percentage rent. So we have um, a double element for that in year one. The percentage rent to the city is 73% of any revenue generated over $975,000. So that gross rent that Mark just mentioned, anything, Above the 975,000 mark, 
would be shared by the city 73%, the remaining piece would Republic would keep. In year two, that factor changes. The threshold goes up to $1,350,000, and the city share above that number is 83%. So we do have some projections that we put together. Actually, Republic um, had put together some um, revenue numbers, a revenue stream. As we all know, we basically have maiden territory out there. We don't, we don't have meters. They had n not much to go by as far as our revenue stream. So they did look at all the number of spaces we had, and I believe they used an occupancy rate of maybe 42 percent in yes. that ballpark yeah. for the revenue numbers that they have um, calculated for us. And at the end of 10 years, based upon their 42 percent utilization, it's about an 18 million dollar um, number that would be coming to the city, spread it over the 10 years. Year one is a little over a million dollars. Year two, 1.4 million. Year five, 1.5 million. And it goes up a little bit each year. So that is the, um, the basic structure of the agreement with um, Republic. And there is some, the guaranteed rent would be paid on a monthly basis, so every month we get a check. The uh, percentage rent would be based off of every six months we would get a check based upon the actual activity. So um, that's how we structured this contract that will uh, be in place shortly. Thank, Thank you. you. Page eight. Uh, section 8, which is on page 8, yes, I'm going to run through. we should be able to run through this really quickly now, because some of this I can gloss over uh, without losing the flavor of it all. Uh, section 8 deals with their insurance coverages. Of course, they have to do all of the uh, coverages that the law requires, including, work, including workers' compensation, but also liability insurance in the amount of a million dollars per occurrence and aggregate of two million dollars, also automobile uh, policy, of $1 million per occurrence and an, uh, an umbrella policy of $5 million. Uh, the city must be carried as an additional insured on those policies, and if there's going to be any type of uh, cancellation of that, then we have to receive 30 days notice. If you're in business, you're familiar with all that. Already. Okay. Um, the city says that it will not authorize the operator to begin work under this agreement unless we have that certificate of insurance, and then it goes on to say uh, who would be covered and Actually, I like this because we got it from another uh, uh, city, which is out of California, that their insurance company, the one that they choose, has to be uh, obviously doing business in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but it has to have a certain rating according to an independent company in New Jersey that rates insurance companies. I thought that was very clever. I guess I'm the only one that does. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the op operator Republic under Section 9 agrees to buy 85 multi-space meters and 12 single-space meters. Uh, their acquisition cost on that are $611,056. Uh, they are also going to uh, 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 procure two enforcement vehicles. And then there's the enforcement software, the license plate recognition system, which costs $111,000. Uh, also, meters, vehicles, enforcement systems, LPR systems are their property, according to what I said earlier. That if, they, uh, if the city terminates them, then we'd have to pay according to the immunization schedule for those items, or if they terminate before the end of the first seven years, then those items would come to us free of lien or encumbrance, whether they are consensual or non-consensual, which basically means whether those liens would be by contract or by way of a judicial order. We'd get them free and clear. Uh, let's see. Skipping over to 11, the vehicles have to, excuse me, I'm on page 11, number 10, operators' vehicles, all the stuff you might expect. Uh, they have to be in compliance with the law. Uh, they shall have a sign which says uh, frequent stops, and that they, these vehicles have to be such that they have markings which are not similar to a Medford police vehicle, a fire or any other municipal vehicle, so that they're clearly identified as being uh, parking enforcement, but not one of those three municipal departments. It's simply so that nobody thinks, oh, here's a police officer coming to me, because those identity things can be nightmarish if the wrong people are involved. Next, their personnel. Um, uh, Republic uh, agrees to submit a recruitment plan, which will, which will include a description of its strategy to hire local residents, which shall include recruitment fairs, local print, radio, and internet advertisements. And the requirement is to use their best efforts to hire a staff of qualified Medford residents with a hiring of 50% Medford residents, of which 20% will be minorities and 20% will be women. 
Uh, also, they're going to do background checks on all their employees, including a quarter check uh, with the assistance of the Medford Police Department, get their driving records, uh, shall uh, employ uh, people who are only competent to do the service, they shall not carry a firearm, they shall be polite and courteous, they shall not implicitly or explicitly represent that they are police officers of the city of Medford. That seems something which is a no-brainer, but it's something which is very important. Also, they'll comply with all laws, and Republic shall not use discriminatory hiring practice, practices, and shall not discriminate in recruiting, hiring, promoting, demoting, or terminating on the basis of race, religion, color, national origin, ancestry, sexual orientation, age, sex, disability, gender expression, gender identity, genetics, or political beliefs, income status, or active or veteran military status. I think we've covered all that. Also, uh, Section 12, the City of Medford uh, uh, states that uh, they cannot hire anybody who has an outstanding warrant or has been convicted of any crime of dishonesty, and all of that stuff is in there about uh, uh, criminology, etc. Uh, also, City of Medford believes in uh, uh, custom ser uh, uh, customer service and the Republic's uh, personnel shall treat the public in a courteous, helpful, and uh, professional man uh, manner. Uh, they'll have uniforms and attire, and, and uh, the operator shall be responsible for training their personnel in customer service, conflict management, civil rights, disability, accessibility laws and procedures, municipal ordinances pertaining to uh, parking enforcement and job safety, including but not limited to OSHA standards. Uh, also, indemnification, we have the whole harmless agreements going both ways, as you might expect. Uh, release and waiver of subrogation is a cousin to indem uh, indemnification. Basically, uh, says that we're releasing each other if we make insurance claims for losses on our properties. Uh, page fifth, uh, 14, item 15, well, all licenses and permits have to be in order. Laws and ordinances have to be um, uh, complied with, but also there's data retention two elements of this because there's going to be a lot of data coming in and remember that they're using license plate recognition systems which essentially are going to be taking pictures or depictions of areas so privacy can becomes an issue and you get involved in all this stuff well uh, the first is that they'll maintain and keep their records according to the data retention schedule which is set forth by the Secretary of State of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because that's what we'd have to do as a municipality but more. Uh, the parking management program being implemented pursuant to this agreement, this is in the middle of page 14, will include a process by which license plate images will be captured with license plate recognition cameras. When this occurs, the license plate information associated with the enforcement of the parking citation and citations will be then transferred from the LPR computer to the Flex database. The operator, that's Republic shall adopt an information storage policy that will ensure that all license plate information obtained by the LPR camera if that is unrelated to the parking citation or ticket will be purged by the LPR computer within eight hours. If we don't, if we don't need it for purposes of the ticket, we don't want it. We, I mean, it might seem to be on the boundary of what's a concern to the city, but it's not. Privacy issues to a citizen in this day and age with the type of technology that exists presently in the world, you better be careful of your privacy interest, and that's called for in this contract. Relationship of the parties, uh, they're an independent contractor. Uh, force majeure, I love saying that word. Uh, no management fee shall be due to Republic if it suspends operations for any cause or event for the period of suspension. A cause majeure is strike, boycott, labor dispute, embargoes, uh, shortages of material, acts of God, uh, acts of the public enemy, acts of public authority, etc. And during that time, the city will not be responsible to reimburse Republic for the fully unamortized capital expense for the period of, of suspension. I'm going to roll real quick. We're almost through. Governing choice, choice of law. It's going to be the agreements construed according to the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And if there's a dispute, it has to be entered in a Massachusetts court. Seems to be a no-brainer, but there are municipalities that enter into contracts without specifying that, and they end up getting sued in places like Chattanooga, <laughs> or we're not. 
We're staying in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, the rest deals with approvals, waivers, terminations, assignment. They can't assign it to anybody else. Notices, who the notice goes to. You don't have to go over all this. The notice goes to the mayor or to the city solicitor's office and to Republic to their offices at Chattanooga. This agreement is the entire agreement in a sense. It says that in uh, paragraph 20, uh, 26. But in fact, the priority in terms of interpretation go this way. The first way is the contract. The second is the RFP. And the third is the proposal. So in priority of interpretation, those are the three ways you go. Those are the dominoes that fall first. Agreement, RFP, proposal. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, uh, there's a conflict of interest position, uh, provision here which says the Republic, even though it's not a governmental entity, will comply with the rules that pertain to conflict of interest as set forth in Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 268A, which is the conflict of interest statute and the ethics statute in the common law. I think that's it, but let me make sure. Just because I'm done, that's why I'm clapping. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's it. that is the agreement in a nutshell. All right, at this point, we're going to open it up to questions from the city council. Council Vice President Caraviello. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, who am I directing the questions to? The parking? Whoever your question is. Parking. Um, <laughs> do you have a master plan of the city where you're planning on putting these kiosks and all these other all these things? The location of the kiosk were part of the R and B, which is a part of this contract. Right, but I mean, but you have like a master plan, so we can see what areas you plan to put these in. Well, the streets are already laid out in the contract where the meters are going to go. The exact location. But we don't know what that is. We don't know what the streets are. Uh, it's in the RFP. I don't think we yeah. want to go through every street. It's they were attached to the. They wanted to be attached to the it's, RFP. Okay. It's basically the report that was done by the original commission okay. that went around. The representative of the council, business community, and the chief. So there are copies of it around. Yeah, tell us. I can make it available electronically. Yeah. Um, send them out. Just copy the number spots. Data theft. Now we know that you know, people are stealing your credit cards. Who's responsible for that? Mark, will that be us? Or no? All the equipment is completely PCI compliant. Okay. So if there's any data theft from the credit card, we won't be responsible. Thank you, President Huso. I, I think the council knows the answer, but the question was asked um, to re-up your time through your phone. Um, if you could explain, I think Stephanie explained it to us in the council meeting, if it's a limited spot, then you cannot re-up it through your phone, but if it's a you know spot where you can continually stay there, can you I can how that's explain be a little bit, out? and you can jump in, uh, Jack. Sure. If it's a two-hour time zone and you've used an hour of your time and that, you pay for two, you're able to jump to another location and you still have an hour. It's consecutive. You don't, you know, your time driving doesn't come off, so you have you can use up the rest of your hour <coughs> in another spot. But if you were in a 15-minute zone, you're not going to be able to keep continuously re-upping it. And likewise, if you're in, a, let's say, a, a yeah. no limitation spot and you've paid for two, you're running late, you can throw another hour either on your phone or you run back to the kiosk. So you're, you are limited by the time zones. Does that answer, Does that answer your question? Uh, my question was directed more toward, I, I believe this is all put in for the benefit of the city of Medford, and of course any revenue is good. Right. But what is to prevent somebody from paying and disintermediating from downtown Boston, paying to park in Medford, traveling downtown on a commute, upping up on their cell phone, and then coming back at the end of the workday for what essentially sounds like a six to a seven dollar parking fee for the day. If I could. Yeah. The LPR system will track your presence where you're at for how long. So if you exceed the ordinance, which says two hours or one hours or 15 minutes in a specific location, you'll be issued a citation. That's, what, that's the deterrent. Whether you paid for that spot or not. So you yeah. could have paid for the spot and still get a citation by extending beyond that two hour time. What if it's the commuter being parked in a longer? Excuse me. Excuse me. We're gonna have, citizens are going to have plenty of time. I allow the gentleman to have his question because Council Alongo Kern was alluding to him. So I want to show sure what the other person do. Well, Either everybody, everybody speaks or nobody speaks. Yeah. Well, he was asked, she was asked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, you'll be, have plenty of time, sir. You will. Okay. Uh, Councilor Max. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I was just wondering if we can get back to 
uh, some of the comments that were made initially by uh, the mayor uh, and regarding the process. And um, I know back, I believe it was in 2007, that the mayor appointed this parking advisory board, which I was one of the members uh, that sat on this committee, along with Chief Sacco, who actually chaired it. And in 2009, September 2009, we made our recommendations as an advisory board. And uh, we were not uh, put together as a committee to put together a parking enforcement program. We were just uh, uh, put together to look to see, first of all, if parking enforcement was needed in the community. And I think everyone felt it was needed. And then we were missioned with meeting with other communities, seeing how they do enforcement and so forth. So our mission was never to put together a program. I just want that to be clear. Since 2009, the mayor, uh, and, and this is where I, I, I want to get a little more clarification, has appointed another committee of, I believe, five people um, that uh, took the ball and actually put together a parking enforcement program, whether or not we're going to have kiosks, whether or not we're going to pay for parking, whether or not uh, what aspects are going to be uh, city-owned, like we're going to be doing hearings, and the rest of it's going to be owned by this particular company. So they, they were missioned with putting together the program itself, and I was just wondering who those five members were, and I was wondering what public input uh, was during this process from the business community to residents to have any say in what actually is going to take place. Because I can just say as a member of the council, I feel, and I'm not going to speak for anyone else, I've had very little to no involvement in this since September 2009. And I would have loved to have been part of this process of putting this together, getting public input, seeing what business owners uh, would like to see, seeing the different neighborhoods, uh, especially the business districts, because that's what I'm hearing, Mr. President, that the needs in West Method may be different than Method Square and different than Haines Square and the Hillside. And these are the things I think that uh, a public meeting or, or several public forums could have helped put together a proposal that would have appeased everyone. And I was just wondering if the mayor can walk us through the five members and what took place after that. Mr. Campbell, let me just correct yeah. your, your recollection of, of what took place because it was, in fact, your commission, whether advisory or not, recommended. Here's where these, at the time, you felt you wanted, you individually wanted parking meters. I said the parking meters create a bigger issue on the sidewalk in terms of plowing and shoveling and everything else. Probably better off with the kiosk. But I know we did have some back and forth at that over whether they should be used to by kiosks. So you did, in fact, gather a lot of information that was very helpful to us uh, in the entire process. We've also had much discussion at the public meetings, um, at city council meetings, which you yourself no, have had. Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, I'm talking in particular, the five-member board that you appointed. I'll get to that. You, you said a lot of things. Right, and you keep on referring you back to the council. This is your proposal, Mr. Mayor. I don't want people to leave here thinking this is the council proposal. This is your proposal. It's your proposal to outsource. It's your proposal to charge people to park on the street. It's your proposal to use these kiosks. This is your proposal. I just want people to know that. Okay. And so you can dance around any way you want. Well, we'll have to dance your around. Your proposal. Let's, let's just be very clear about right. it. Right. I'd like to know who the five members It was are. initiated. This was initiated by the council. Excuse me for but, one second. Sir, can I ask you just to get stationary back there because people sure. behind you are trying to hear. But you're more than welcome to continue filming. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing because it's going to keep traffic circulating throughout the community. I was just pointing out that, yes, you and I did, in fact, have conversations on this about the outsourcing, about the meters themselves. I don't themselves. agree with outsourcing, Mr. Bates. I don't, I don't know what conversations you're referring to. I really well, don't. I'm referring to the conversations that you had with the committee at the time. We sat there and said, I don't remember you want everybody, meetings, Mr. everyone Mr. to Mr. be a Medford employee. This program... Uh, I have structured it such that it's not costing us. We're not picking up benefits of employees. We are hiring Metro residents with a priority to work in their own community, but will be under the direction of the company itself. Now, the five members who are on the committee are Stephanie Burke, uh, Mark Rumley. So you have um, finance, you have law, you have procurement, you have 
Freddy Pompeo slash Judy, Judy who's here, um, who is probably the foremost expert in the city about permits and, and everything that's going on, uh, and myself. The chief. The chief. And, oh, and the chief. Excuse me, and the chief. And we have, um, anytime you <coughs> come to the city council or ask to get on the agenda or have the committee the whole, um, or anytime there is discussion at the public meeting, that in fact is a public meeting. It's a public meeting. Now that the mission of what was started from discussions on the council in, 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 in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce in the city, that we have then carried on to develop the plan that people sought um, was approved for the 10 year bid, and we went out to bid, and now we're here to educate people about the entire program. We didn't have a program until last week. So, so just if I could follow up, then, then the board that you appointed or the advisory committee was strictly department heads. It was strictly department heads. Contract, there wasn't law, members finance, of the community, there wasn't members of the business community. Procurement. Right. Yeah. I, I understand absolutely. that. And, and the, that was your committee. The public meetings you were referring to. That was to, your committee. Right. The, that was the public. That was the, the public meetings you're referring to as a body that has no involvement, no seat at the table. But you're saying that's where the public can come, business owners can come, and try to impact change to your proposal. No, I, that I, doesn't sound right, Mr. No, I, I think that's what you so call it. No, that you, doesn't you call sound it, right. You, I believe you call the, the, the council uh, is the last place a person's voice can be heard. So I, in that same vein, I would think that you would hope and understand that when you go to a committee of the whole, that is a public meeting, or you go to uh, a council meeting or something that's on the agenda, that, in fact, is a public meeting. Right. And there have been numerous ones. Right. In addition to um, all of the media attention that it has received in the last five years. And just one last point. And, and, and Mr. Mayor, I agree. Parking enforcement, I've been pushing for it for a number of years. But my vision of parking enforcement is a little different than yours. We have a difference of agreement. That's all. I believe we need parking enforcement. I believe we need to enforce the current signage that's out there. And we should have been doing that for years, consistently. But that didn't take place, and that's why you saw the outcry from residents, resident permit parkers, and, and everyone else in the community, the business owners that came and said, we need enforcement. And that's why the council has been pushing for it. And, and, and that's the only reason, Mr. Mayor, because there was a lack of enforcement. I understand that. So, but don't walk away from your identification of where the meters should be. In your we did not identify where the meters in your, should be, Mr. In Mayor. your discussions we, about, about having meters versus kiosks, Mr. in Mr. your Mayor. discussions about hiring employees I, I that would be on the, on the city I, payroll. I just tell you, I sat on the it, committee. It, you, you weren't present. I sat on the committee. You sat at the committee. We, I sat in that chair we, right there. You sat right there. And our report. We went back and forth over four or five items. Mr. Mr. Mayor, in our report, all we did was detail the number of parking spaces in every business district. We did not put together a plan saying, we like meters here to there, or we want kiosks here to there. We did not. And if we did, I'd like to see that proposal. It was Rhonda Franzo that did the ladies' work, and the chairman's right there, and you know, he, he remembers the conversations. It was Ronnie DeFranzo that put together the number of spots, not when me as a kiosk going to go. So we didn't have any involvement. I just want people to know that this is your proposal, Mr. Mayor. Let me ask you something. Do you remember at any time ever saying that it shouldn't just be the square, it should be every business district? And in the neighborhoods, too, I said. Because you didn't oh, want you to did do the neighborhoods that. at first. Oh, you did say that. Okay. Right. You didn't want to do the neighborhoods. I didn't want to do the neighborhood. Right, right. I absolutely wanted to do the neighborhood. No, you didn't want to. You don't want to take a call every time businesses. someone wants a resident pocket issue? You said that start off with the businesses, and I said that you're going to put all the... I said what? You said that start off doing the business district first. Mr. Mayor, yes, you did. And then we said it's going to push all the people that want to park into the neighborhoods. That's what you're going to do. And you I, need to do I both at the same time. No, no, that's what we said as a committee. No. Well, let me, no. Let me just clarify what I said. After I this, said that the kiosks yeah. would go into the, the, yeah. the business districts. I think they would go into the, the conversation. business districts. Obviously, they have to go in before there's a program, and then we would simultaneously 
do both the neighborhoods and the business districts. You all set with questions, sir? I'll have more. All right. That's all night. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. In the executive session, we had some discussion about the fact that, you know, the implementation of the uh, parking enforcement program and a uh, kiosk system or a needed system was going to be quite a culture shock to the residents. <coughs> you indicated that the credit card use is an expense against the gross revenue. Can you explain that? Sure. Whenever a person uses a credit card, there's a small expense that gets uh, attached to the use of that credit card by the company that um, <laughs> processes the payment. That would be an expense against gross revenue, by, uh, or which would be a benefit to Republic. But that's no different what happens anyway. There's always a, a charge for use of a credit card. Well, so I should say generally. I think in commerce, theory, there may be some exceptions. Okay. Um, and the one thing we haven't yet, yet to hear, and I think you said, Mr. Mayor, at the meeting of May, May, 20, May, May 20th we had, um, we haven't heard anything about who is going to be the parking clerk and who is going to appoint and what control, <coughs> who controls the parking clerk. Okay. Um, we, we actually had that discussion in this particular meeting, and I think there's another disagreement on that. I think um, some were suggesting that we had to hire somebody else. And I was suggesting that would stay with the present system that we have for a couple of reasons. Number one, when you are issued a ticket, Jack, how many pictures do they take of that vehicle when they issue the ticket? And a citation? Yeah. There will be one that identifies the vehicle and the license plate in one image. So okay. It has the GPS coordinates and the time. And, and these, these pictures will go right online. So most people will go online to see if the evidence is there. If it's there, they don't bother to have the, the review. The other reason is I can't speculate if it's going to be more or less. Because of the technology used in this program, I'm assuming it's going to be less. So I can't create a position and hire somebody and have them sit there and see if the work develops. We play it by ear. Uh, Diane McLeod's doing a very good job. And if, in fact, uh, the, the increase did go up dramatically, then we look to expand that service. I believe at that meeting on the 20th of May, um, the cost was projected to be approximately $61,000 to have an outside person come in. And I, I would feel more comfortable having an outside person. Uh, you know, you're hiring Republic to come in, and they're an outside person, and they're paying to put the meters in or the kiosks, whatever it might be, but the city's still going to control the, per, uh, the possibility of the hearing. And, um, I'm just not comfortable with that. I think the politics of the hearing officer it would be just as prevalent as, as the politics of not having the hearing officer. I think I think that needs to be discussed. But I'm going to just give you some examples. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, President, uh, Mr. Vice President, whoever okay. in charge right now, uh, I, I take exception to that word. Diane's a, a woman of great moral. Character. I just talked about the politics. I didn't mention anyone no by name. Politics. I didn't mention anyone by name. Did you have your opportunity to speak? I'm having mine, okay? Yeah, but when you, when you knock that. somebody's... I didn't knock character. anybody. You say that... Well, you're becoming very defensive. Politics. You're becoming very defensive. When you, a when you knock a person... I didn't knock anybody. Job, there's no politics involved whatsoever. You can, you, you can read you it into it any way you want. I've had the opportunity during this past week, and I think we've all gotten a, 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 a tremendous amount of emails, and I've gone to every one of the people that have sent me an email, and every business person that has sent to me, and especially in the West Medford and the South Medford areas, that they are totally against the kiosks and, and the meters. Because a lot of these businesses are nothing more than a 10 or a 15 minute stop. Who goes in to get a sandwich? Who goes in to get their Chinese food? Who goes in maybe to get an ice cream? And to have somebody maybe go to a kiosk and, and for an hour pay a dollar's worth, if that's what the cost is going to be, they just feel that they're going to lose their customers. They're not going to be gaining any more customers. So as far as that part of where and throughout the city, these kiosks are going, and the type of business that are going to be affected, I think the council should have been apprised of that. And when you said, Mr. Mayor, that the Chamber of Commerce was part on with this, every single one of the people that I've spoken to who are members of the chamber did not they didn't even get notices of these meetings tonight. This is, you know, this should have been highly publicized in the council co committee and uh, the council chambers so people could have come in and had an opportunity to discuss this. Now, you know, we're taking an opportunity here tonight we're taking an opportunity here tonight to discuss something that's going to have make a dramatic impact in the community, whether it's a dollar an hour, 25 cents an hour, and what have you. But I think we really need to look at the business people. It's bad enough you're taxing them to death because they're almost double 
residential to commercial tax rate. It's bad enough you're going to be hitting them with an increase in their water rate, and now you're going to turn around and tell them when it comes to their customers, you're going to be having to charge them for a 15 or a 10 or a 20 minute stop by an hourly rate. So let's go to the argument of going to a kiosk and, and somebody wants to do it in the car. And, and, and how do we know, where's the gentleman, who's the gentleman that talked about the kiosk? Oh, oh, okay. How do we know that these kiosks are, are, are really going to do what they're supposed to be doing? You're indicating, you're telling us, for the first year, the city of is going to get $300,000. That's the beer bones minimum, correct? Okay, and then we heard Stephanie Burke or someone mention the fact that anything over the first $975,000, the city of Metro will generate 73% in the first year. That's mm -hmm. what you said. And then you turned around and said, that's whoever said it, yep. and then they said in the second year, from the second year on, anything over $1,350,000, the city would get 83% of that money. As far as I'm concerned, this reminds me of a money enhancement for the city of Medford. This isn't protecting the businesses no because this makes it look like you're going out there, you're going out there and telling the business people you are now going to pay, you are going to pay for more to, to maintain the city. For God's sake, you can go down West Memphis right now on Playstead Road and they've been sitting there since the end of June without having parking permits, okay? Through no fault of the city because maybe they're waiting for this to take place. But you have out-of-towners living in there, uh, coming there each and every day. For $100 a year, you can park in the city of Medford, leave your car in the parking spot, take a bus, go to Boston, and nobody's going to bother you. And there is no enforcement. No enforcement to that. So if there's no enforcement to that, what makes you think you folks, would, and we don't even know, you can say it any way you want, Mr. Mayor. You can tell us anything you want. We don't know the spots that you have outlined. Have you gone to the West Method and to the South Method businesses and explained to them, listen, we're thinking of putting kiosks yeah. over here. What do you think? And I guarantee you the answer is no. And the reason why the answer is no is because I don't think the city wants to let anyone know because right. we're going to be making more money. This is a revenue enhancement program. Council Marks alluded to something that's you know, traffic enforcement is not out there to make money, it's to get to the offenders. And the offenders are those people who continuously misuse and misuse and misuse city property and residential area properties. And if in fact, if in fact you can generate money because people are violating that, that's so be it. But when now when you're putting a price tag on it, a dollar an hour, whatever it might be, you know, I, I don't think it's fair. Now Council Longo asked the question, if somebody goes and they, and they uh, buy it for two hours and they only use it for one hour, can they come back the next day or two days later and pick up the extra hour that they didn't use? No. They can't. So there, once again, you make an extra dollar out of it and, and the customer loses a dollar. So, I mean, these are the issues that I think really need to be discussed. And I think the business people who have a legitimate business in the community need to understand that if a kiosk is going to be part of the city's revenue enhancement program, then they need to be coming to the table and sat down. I think every single square should have had an opportunity yeah. through their business yeah. people to come there and tell you and tell you what they think the problem would be if you put a kiosk. Medford Square, you're right, is nothing like West Medford or South Medford or even up in Boston Avenue. They're all entirely different. But if you look at a lot of those businesses, they are short-term businesses. They're not there for the long run. And, 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 and this is what this appears to be. Yeah, you know, and it's unfortunate, with all due respect to you, Mark. You know, we get something tonight, and, and we're asked to look upon this. And we get an 18-page, we got an 18-page document tonight, okay? And you expect the council to look at this and say, well, this is, this is great. How do you know what our feelings are? We're listening to what you said. You haven't heard what the community said. This is, these are the people who are going to pay for it, not you or the mayor. These are the people that have to pay for this. At that committee, the whole meeting council. The May 20th. You, yes, you said specifically, will the council have an opportunity to see this before it's signed? Yeah, not the night off. Who said it's getting signed tomorrow? You were given a copy of the final draft, and it has not been signed. The courtesy that I told you you'd be extended, you have been, and you throw a brick at it. Please. Ma, don't say the courtesy we've been extended. This is our responsibility. This, this is our responsibility. No, Your no, responsibility no, the, the was to put the contract. That I have is to, no, the responsibility that I have is to draft a contract that I'm asked to draft in a way which is going to protect the interest of the municipality. And that's been done. Okay. And the courtesy that I said would be extended to you was done. And so you take exception to that. I, I take exception to the fact Honestly. that you cannot accept the, some, another one's opinion. In my opinion, no, I may accept not your opinion. Well, it's not the same as you. Well, and maybe that's in your opinion. I think you're wrong to have this type of an attitude. Well, I think no, this community, no, no, I believe, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I believe the community, 
needs needs to revisit, revisit this. I think each and every each and every square should have an opportunity to discuss this and find out if kiosks are going in there, why they would be going in there, and maybe and maybe you don't need kiosks there. Maybe if you have signs that say 15, a half hour, or a 45 minute, and you have a revenue enforcement that way. You know, you can go to surrounding communities. You have Malden. You have retired. You have retired people walking around. They do two-hour things, and, and that seems to work. You may have a combination of things that you could do here. We don't know. We're just looking at one program coming forward by Republic. And I'll just conclude by saying the following: We were told on May 20th that this was confidential, and how it got out ahead of time, I don't know. But apparently, it did get out, because we were told at that time if we would let anyone know then whoever the city was negotiating with would put the city at a disadvantage. Well, you know, I respectfully disagree. Whoever let the cat out of the bag, you didn't do anybody any favors. You know, this may be a great program to some people, but as far as I'm concerned, if you ask me right now, I would say strongly, Mr. Mayor, please do not sign this contract. I think you need to go to the squares within this community, have more public meetings, listen to what these shop owners have to say, and then you can decide where the kiosks want to go. But to put them in West Method, South Method, on Boston Avenue, for people that, don't, that maybe spent 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most, and you're asking them to buy an hour's worth of time, I think that's wrong. I don't think it's fair. And I think it's against, against business. It's not good for business, it's against business. Yeah. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor. I had gone business communities first before I came to the council to be arguing the other way. No, they didn't. Now, a couple of things. The chamber, according to the president, was notified. Um, you can buy for 25 cents 15 minutes. It's not an hour for the 15 minutes. So, and, and this is the education of the press, just so that the wrong message isn't getting out there. Uh, in, the, in the way you would prevent yourself from losing that extra hour, you know, why would you pay for two hours if you're only going to stay an hour? You just put in enough for the hour. There's, there's no validity to that argument. But if you're going to just go, Mr. Mayor, if you're just going to go and pick up a sandwich and you're just going to go uh, at five, ten minutes, why do you even need a kiosk? Why do you even need to do that? Why? Let's why? talk about it. Why? Because the history shows in a lot of the business districts that people that do it and well attention, they're going to stay for five or ten minutes. Now they go and they talk to this one. Now they go in this area. So that, that spot blocks that, that uh, spot in front of the business. It's all about turning over spots mm -hmm. so there's availability so more and more people can go to those stores and go to those restaurants. That's been the theory of, of uh, enforcement in media since, uh, since the creation, back when, when we had them back in the 50s and the, the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, before they were taken out the first time. Um, so, But if you follow that theme, the business people will tell you Respectfully, they don't want it because there's enough parking spaces during the day. They're not complaining about not having enough parking spaces. This is the key issue. They are too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a difference of opinion yeah. on that one. Council Del Yeah, if I could, uh, Mr. President, uh, to uh, the, the solicitor, in uh, on page two, uh, item number three, parking spaces and permit parking, which uh, I believe.